Welcome to the Growing in Love for Life podcast, where it's all about saving and strengthening your marriage and creating the relationship you really deserve and want to have. And now, from growinginloveforlife.com, relationship and marriage coach and best-selling author, your host, Liam Naden. This is Episode 6 of the Growing in Love for Life podcast. Hi everyone, it's Liam Naden here. Welcome to this episode. I'm delighted you can be here. And in this episode, we're going to talk about something that I think is really, really critical to being able to succeed or not with your marriage, and that is to ask yourself the question, how do you know if your marriage is the right one for you? I mean, how do you really know that? In other words, should you be there or not? In other words, can I be happy in this marriage? Are we going to be able to sort out our problems? And do I still love my husband and my or my wife? So it all comes down to this thing of, of knowing if you're actually in the right marriage or not. And it's vitally important that you know this, whether it's the right one for you or not, because if it's not, then it doesn't matter what you do, you're probably not ever going to be able to fix all your problems anyway. And you're, So you're always going to have problems, and you're going to have a life of regret as well. So the purpose of this podcast... I really want to help you to remove the confusion about knowing whether you're actually in the right marriage or not. And hopefully by the end of this, you will have a much clearer idea of whether you are in the right marriage or not. Now, of course, what you do with that knowledge then is up to you. And that, that of course, raises some, some other questions. But at least in knowing, a huge load is probably going to come off your shoulders just by knowing whether you're on the right track or not. Okay, so the first thing we want to look at just before we get into defining how to know whether you're in the right marriage, is why it's important to be in the right marriage or relationship. And that comes down to asking one of the biggest questions, maybe the the biggest question, which is, what do you think is the purpose of your life? Now, Now, this is obviously a question that every philosopher, religious teacher throughout history has asked themselves. And you might think, well, you know, how on earth am I going to be able to answer that one? But to help you answer that question, I want to tell you a, a bit of a story, and I'm not sure whether it's a, a folk tale or, or a true story, but I think it's a lovely story anyway, and it's, it's, a, it's about a philosopher who was shipwrecked on a remote island in the Pacific. And he found himself on the beach, and he was in a pretty sorry state, but he was found by some local villagers. And they took him back to the village, and they brought him back to health and looked after him and, and nursed him. And after a little while, he he started to really um, be happy and notice notice how these people were living, and they seemed to have a very simple lifestyle. I mean, basically, what they did was they fished all day, and the children played in the village or in the surrounding area, and at night they'd sit around the fire and they'd eat together, they'd prepare a meal, and then they'd tell stories to each other and they'd sing some songs and and play games, and one evening. As he was sitting there, he, being the philosopher that he was, he he turned to one of the, one of the more senior members of the the tribe, and he said, he said to him, "By the way, what do you think the purpose of life is?" And there was a silence, and all of a sudden, all of the rest of the villagers were silent as well, and they all looked at him, and the 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 tribesmen, the villagers, said to him, he looked at him with a rather puzzled look on his face, and he said. Well, the purpose of life is to be happy. Are you new? <laughs> so anyway, and I think, you know, that is a very good point. What is the purpose of life? I think the purpose of life really is to be happy. And your relationship is there as part of that to help you to be happy. And of course, it can only do that if, if your relationship meets your needs and helps you bring out the best in you as a human being. So our relationship is very important for our life purpose of actually being happy. And if you're not in the right marriage, then you're certainly not going to be happy. And not only that, but you're not going to be able to really to give both to other people and to yourself and to live to your full God-given potential. And you're going to make life harder for yourself than it needs to be. And you're not really going to fully experience what true love is, particularly intimacy and true sexual love. And the other thing I think that we need to remember if we're not in the right marriage is that we're not sending out the right messages to our children about what a relationship really is. 
So it's very, very important to be in the right marriage, in the right relationship. It's vital to your happiness and really to your fulfillment and reaching your full potential as a human being, which I believe is what we're all here to do. Okay, so let's get on to the question then, how do you know if you're in the right marriage? Now the problem is, of course, this becomes even more difficult when we're having marriage problems. It becomes a more difficult question to answer because obviously we're going through a lot of emotional stress. Um, we have doubts and confusions arise. We're trying to deal with all sorts of problems and, and conflicts that are arising. So what I'm going to cover here is a bit of a process to give you some thoughts and ideas to help you get some clarity so that you can, you can really see the wood for the trees, if you like, about what the real situation is. So I think it's a process you're going to find helpful. But just before we start, there are a couple of things I want you to bear in mind. And the first thing is, please, for your own sake, be honest with yourself. I'm going to ask you some questions that are a little bit deep, quite deep in fact, but it's vital that you're honest with yourself. And it's often very difficult to be honest because we have a lot of emotional baggage at stake here. But um, it's vital to be honest with yourself. And the second thing is, to make it a little bit easier, I've provided what I've called a thought sheet. And that's a sheet of paper you can download and print off and write some of your answers and your thoughts and your ideas down to help, you give, help, to help give you more clarity on this particular question. So to find that, all you need to do is go to the website liamnaden.com, look for this episode, which is episode number six, and you'll see... Uh, that work, that thought sheet available for download there. Okay, so now let's get into it and really come up with a process to deciding and knowing if your marriage is the right one for you. And there are a few steps here. So step number one, the first thing you need to do to get the answer to this question is you need to define what you really want and need. What you want and need. You know, I think the the two most important words in the English language, well, in fact, they weren't originally originally in English, they were in Greek, so they're really, whichever language you're in, they're the two most important words in that language, are the two words that are inscribed in the Greek temple of Apollo at Delphi, and they are know thyself. Know yourself. Everything comes back to knowing yourself. So you need to know what you really want and need to be happy. And that's the first thing you need to do to determine if you're in the right marriage or not. Now, I'm not talking here about material things like how much money you need or or what sort of car you want to drive or holidays, because at the end of the day, actually, none of those things are going to make you happy on um, in themselves. But what you need to know is what you need to make you happy in the way of the feelings that you need. How do you want to feel on a day-to-day -day and a moment-to-moment -moment basis? And here's some questions to ask yourself to define that. And as I, remember, as I said, these are all written in the, in the thought sheet available on the website. But the first question to ask, what feelings are important to you? You know, everybody has different sorts of feelings that are important to them. But what are the most important feelings to you? And here are some examples. There's happiness, peace, security, freedom, adventure, love, intimacy, passion. So think of some of the feelings that you really want to have in your life. I've given you a few examples there, and there are a few more in the worksheet as well. Um, and, and really identify what is the most important for you. And then another thing, the next thing, is to put into one sentence what you really want to achieve in your life. In other words, when you're on your deathbed, what do you want people to say about you? What do you want your life to have meant in the eyes of other people as well as to yourself? The next thing, name three things that you do currently or that you could do that make you happy. What are three things that really make you happy? Are they particular activities? Are they things that you're involved in? What are the and and think about not only what makes you happy but the feelings they give you as well. Are they funny situations? Are they dangerous situations? Are they where you're learning new things, or are they peaceful situations where you're just feeling very calm and relaxed and safe? Those are all things that to uh, to make a note of. 
And the last question in this section, what's your ideal lifestyle? How would you, in your ideal world, just close your eyes and picture it, how would you want to live? This can be very different depending on the sort of person that you are. I mean, would you rather live peacefully in the countryside with a, on a bit of land with a few animals and just and having a very simple lifestyle? Or would you, would you want to sail around the world would you, or travel around the world on an adventure? Would you want to go to Africa as a missionary? Would you want to run your own business? Would you really like to run a home and just look after your children? All of those things are quite different. So it's important for you to define what your ideal lifestyle is for you. And I think if you answer all those questions, you're going to see very clearly what it is that you want in your life and the feelings that you need to have for you to be happy. So that's the first step. Okay, the second step is to define your ideal marriage. Now what you need to do here is step out of your current situation. So just come up with a theoretical and ideal world in which you're living in your ideal marriage. And it may or may not involve your current spouse, but that's that's not really the picture you're trying to create here. It's it's how do you see a marriage fitting in with making you really happy? So don't put any limits or restrictions on your picture, but create a picture of what you and your partner or your spouse in an ideal marriage would be doing together. And what feelings would you and your ideal wife or husband be giving each other? So it's those two things. What would you be doing together and what feelings would you be giving each other? And again, these can be very different. Can you imagine the two of you backpacking around South America, having a great time staying in a different place every night? Or would the two of you be building a business together? Or the two of you living on a quiet farm somewhere in the countryside? So what would you be doing together and how would you make each other feel? What feelings would you be giving each other? That's the second thing to answer. Okay, so the third thing is what I call partner match. And this is really where you take what your ideal life looks like and your ideal feelings, and you start to match it up with your current situation. Because that's going to give you a very good idea of whether your marriage is the right one for you. So here's the process. Think of your wife or your husband, your current partner, and ask yourself what feelings and values are important to them. So just as you made a bit of a list of what your feelings are important to you, what's important to them? And what do you think their ideal lifestyle is? And when you've got that, you want to compare the two. Compare it with yours and see how much is of an overlap is there. Are you wanting the same things? Are you wanting ultimately the same lifestyle? And more importantly, are you wanting the same feelings? You know, I see some some people in um, in relationships, and they have they have very different things that they want out of that marriage. So it's important to see: are there any red flags where you can see that your needs are very very different, and that it's going to be very difficult for you to accommodate each other's needs? And in fact, I firmly believe, and from what I've seen, that all conflict in a relationship. And, or a marriage, and this is really as long as most people are, uh, sorry, as long as both people are mentally stable, it's caused by a mismatch in, in the feelings that they want to have. And it's, and it's this mismatch that causes all the communication problems, the, the lack of intimacy, the arguments, and all of the conflict. So you really need to look at what your needs are and what your spouse's needs are and see how compatible those two actually are. And a couple of other important things to consider as well. Firstly, are you happy to meet your spouse's needs when you see what they need? need? You need to consider how different they are from yours and whether you are actually happy to meet their needs and it it would make you happy to do that as well. And do you think they can really meet your needs as well? Can they make you really happy? And a clue here, because obviously at the moment they're probably not making you happy. But a clue is to ask, have they ever ever done so in the past? And particularly early on in your relationship, were they meeting your needs then? Were they making you feel deeply happy? Because things like our values and our needs, they they can change over time. You know, if they've changed from where they were to start with, that's a good sign because it means you can get them back to where they were. But you need to be very honest with this and say, 
are, are you really willing to meet your spouse's true true needs and do you really think they can meet your true needs as well so that's step number three which I call the partner match now step number four and I'm I'm going through these fairly quickly because there are time constraints but obviously if you've got it written down you might want to take some notes um, and it might be a good idea if you're listening to this as a recording you can stop it whenever you like as well because although I'm go going over this process quite quickly it's very important that you spend some time to really think about these particular questions because by doing this you're going to come up with with the right answer so step number four okay step number four is identify what got the two of you together in the first place now this means you have to think right back to the beginning of your relationship and what we're really trying to identify here and this is a very tough question for people to face but it's to say, were you ever actually really in love? Have you ever been in love? Maybe you thought you were, but have you ever really been in love? And of course, to answer that, we've, we, we have to answer another um, very difficult question that's, that's been the, the subject of philosophers and musicians and artists and poets throughout history, everybody basically. And that question is we have to actually define what love is. Specifically we're talking about the love that exists in an intimate relationship here. So I don't profess to be the, the world's greatest philosopher or artist or poet, but I'm going to give you a definition of what true love is that I think within the context of a marriage and in the context of defining and answering this question that you'll find helpful. And that is, firstly, love is not lust or chemistry. Now obviously lust and chemistry, that initial attraction, they're very important um, as part of that initial attraction, but these things can wane and they certainly are going to change over time. So you can't equate love, you know, as people say, well I don't feel that lust or that, that real um, chemistry towards them anymore. And that doesn't necessarily mean you're not still in love with them. Okay, so my definition of love within a marriage or a relationship is that love is meeting each other's needs. In other words, you simply have the ability to make each other feel good. And that comes through what we talked about earlier, having shared values. That to me is the definition of love within a marriage. So knowing that, here's some questions to consider. Firstly, I want you to write down, and if you haven't got a paper handy or you're, you don't really want to write it down, or if you're maybe driving and listening to this, just go through in your head and describe and create the story of the time from when you first met your husband or your wife until the time you actually got married. And just go through and create a bit of a story there and recount all of the events. In other words, if you were describing to somebody else, okay, well, this what happened between when you met, how, how you met somebody, and what happened right up until the time that you got married and what you were feeling. Because the question we really want to answer here is why did you get married in the first place? Okay, so just create a bit of a story in your mind or either on paper of from when you started, everything that happened and everything you felt and thought that you can remember from the time you first met until you got married. Second question, were your highest values, the things, the feelings that are most important to you, were they the same as your spouse's early on in your relationship? In other words, do you think you were both looking for the same feelings from the relationship? In other words, Maybe were you both looking for adventure? Were you both looking for passion and excitement and doing new things and trying new things? Or maybe were you both looking for some security and peace and certainty and serenity from, a, from that relationship? And here's, an, here's an, the next question which is very important. When you first decided to get married and then when you got married, did you have any doubts, fears or uneasy feelings? And if so, what were those thoughts? Were you having feelings like, mm, I shouldn't be doing this, mm, or it doesn't feel right, or I'm, I, I'm, I'm really not sure about this? It's very important to be honest with yourself here, but 
and it's not uncommon for people to have these feelings, but you've got to identify if these were indeed part of your decision when you first got married. So in a nutshell, what you're trying to identify here, and this is the next thing to write down, is what was the number one reason why you got married? So if someone said to you, OK, just tell me the number one reason why you got married and be totally honest, what would that be? So write that down as well. So that's step number four, and that's really all about the beginnings of your relationship and why you got together, and that's going to give you another piece in the puzzle as well. OK, the next step, we've got two to go. The next one is to identify your true feelings for your spouse right now. You know, there's a lot of hurt, a lot of pain going on in a troubled relationship, and that can cloud what our true feelings actually are. There are two things to do here. The first thing is to list all of the things you actually like about your spouse's personality. And I'm not talking about the things that they do or their behaviours, but their personality. So what are some, and I'm presuming there are some things you like about their personality. And they may be things that were part of the initial attraction between the two of you, that things that you really liked as well. So identify all of the things that you like about your partner's personality. And the second thing is the opposite, and that is to create a list of all of the things about their personality that you would like to change. And I hope this list isn't too much longer than the first one. OK, so create a list of all of the things about their personality that, that you would like to change. And there's two things to do here. Once you've written, on, written that list, look at each thing and say, how important is, to, is it to me that they change this? So look at the thing that you don't like about their personality and say, how important is it to me that they change this? And rate it on a scale of 1 to 10. 1 being, well, it really doesn't matter if they change that aspect of their personality or not. Or 10, it's absolutely vital for me that they change that aspect of their personality for me to keep my sanity. So that's the first thing. And the second thing you want to do is look at each of the things you wrote that you would like to change about their personality and ask, how difficult do you think it would be for them to change? So if there's something you don't like in their personality, and you would desperately like them to change it, how difficult do you think it would be for them actually to change it? And again, you can rate that from 1 being really, it would be very easy for them to change it, or 10, you think it would probably be very, very difficult, if not impossible, for them to change it. So. These, those two questions, they're just a simple process to get to the really underneath and seeing how you really feel about your spouse. And it's also a bit of a reality check on how compatible you are as well, which is of course what all this is. So here's the last step, and this is a bit of a wake-up call for many people, and I want you to think carefully about this. But the last step is to identify why you're actually in your marriage. Why are you here right now? Why are you still in that marriage? And there's obviously going to be two sorts of reasons. Some are going to be positive and others are going to be negative. So what are the positive reasons why you're in your marriage? And hopefully there will be some. But, you know, try and identify those. Think about the reasons, the good reasons why you want to hold on to your marriage, why you want it to work. You know, is it because you remember the good times with your spouse? You want to relive the good times. You can recognize the good qualities that they have. There are things about them that you really love that make you... Sm Here's a good thing. Think about your spouse and think about the things that you love about them. And see if you don't have a little internal smile. And even feel a little bit of a surge or a flutter in your heart when you think about them. And some of the, the good times you've had and the good things you've done together. And the good things about their personality. And the good things about them. So identify some of the positive reasons why you're here. And the second thing you want to do is, is ask, are there any negative reasons why you're still here? And by negative reasons, I mean the reasons you're there which are based on fear. And many people, unfortunately, only stay in a marriage or in a relationship because of their fears. So I want you to really think, have you any fears that are holding you in your marriage? And they could be things like guilt. You'd feel guilty if you if you left. Maybe loss of face. You know, you're worrying about what your family or your friends or your children even might think if you left. 
They could be financial reasons. You can't afford to leave. It would make things too difficult for you financially. It could be that you don't know where else to go or you wouldn't know what to do. You wouldn't know how to move on with your life. It could be for the sake of your children. You might think, I don't want my children to, to be brought up in a broken home. I want So for the sake of the children, I'm staying. Or, of course, it could be cultural or religious reasons that may be against your culture or your religious beliefs to, to end your marriage. And the other one, and this is a big one I've found too, it's, is it could be a fear of actually being alone and not being loved. So write down and identify some of the reasons, or as many reasons as you can think of, as to why you're actually still there, why you're in your marriage, and come up with positive and so-called negative ones as well. Okay, well we've gone over this pretty quickly because of the time constraint, as I said. But I really hope this has given you, a, a, by now, I think you should have, if you've, if you've really thought about these questions and been honest, I think you'll have a pretty clear picture of whether or not your marriage is the right one for you. And whether it's truly possible for you to be happy where you are and that your core needs are going to be met in this marriage. Now, of course, knowing is one thing and what you do with... The knowledge is another, but I hope at least this has given you some clarity and will allow you to move forward in the right direction. Now obviously, also, I hope that you are in the right marriage, because if you are, then actually creating true happiness and fulfilment is not that difficult. You know, if you've got the right tools and information, you can do that. And that's really what my coaching program is all about, is showing people who really are in the right relationship, the right marriage, it would be tragic to end it because they just need a bit of the right information and the right way to look at things, which is probably pretty different to what they've done already. It would be tragic to end that relationship without the right information. So that's what my coaching program is all about. But remember, whatever you decide, your happiness and your needs are the most important thing. And that is the purpose of being in a marriage or relationship. And if they're not being met, you shouldn't be there. That's my belief anyway. <music> So I really hope you found this useful. If you want more information, I really encourage you to go to my website, growinginloveforlife.com, and download my free report, The Five Keys to Saving Your Marriage Now, which are going to give you some very powerful tools straight away to turn things around. So thanks very much for joining me. As I say, I really hope this, is, this has helped you, and I look forward to sharing some more information to help you really save and strengthen your marriage next time. Bye for now.